Hi. In this lecture, we're going to be um, using the cost of goods sold equation to determine inventory shrinkage. So we'll be doing a few problems. You can use the accounting essentials document to see what the cost of goods sold equation is. But if you want to just print out the worksheet for Chapter 6, I've got all of that information already pre-printed on there. Okay, so let's take a look at the top one. Corey's Campus Store has $4,000 of inventory on hand at the beginning of the month. During the month, the company buys $41,000 of merchandise and sells merchandise that had a cost of $30,000. At the end of the month, $13,000 of inventory is on hand. That means they counted it. How much shrinkage occurred during the month? Let's isolate the important information here. Corey's Campus Store had $4,000 of inventory and on hand at the beginning of the period. $4,000 beginning inventory would go right there. During the month, the company buys $41,000 of merchandise. That would be considered our purchases. So we'll put that on the next line. And the goods that we had available to sell would be 4,000 plus 41,000 or $45,000 of goods available for Corey's Campus Store to sell. They tell us also that Corey's Campus Store sells merchandise that cost 30,000. So if we take what's available to be sold and we subtract out what was sold, that leaves us with I'm sorry, $15,000 of merchandise that should be in our inventory. And that should be the perpetual record, what our T account should indicate, because we would have debits of both four and 41,000 and a credit of 30,000. So we should have a balance in that account of 15. Ideally, that's how much we should have when we count the inventory as well. However, at the end of the month, $13,000 of inventory is on hand. That's based on a count of the inventory. So we should have $15,000. We do have $13,000. Therefore, we've suffered an inventory shrinkage of $2,000. Let's try this again with the next problem. Now, when we do this problem on Connect, it's set up horizontally like this in our text. But I think it's easier to do if we represent that all vertically. So I've switched it this way. And you might want to do so as well when you do this pro problem for homework. They don't give us anything as a narrative like they did here. They simply fill in the numbers for us. So we have to just calculate the missing items. So beginning inventory plus purchases equals goods available for sale. 100 plus 700 equals $800 of goods available. If 300 were sold, then we should have $500 of inventory on hand. That would be according to our perpetual records. When we count them, we only have $420 of inventory on hand, so we lost 80 due to theft, fraud, or error. Let's do case B. We begin the period with $200 worth of merchandise on hand. We buy another $800, so we have $1,000 in goods available to be sold. They don't give us what's sold, but they tell us what's left. If we've got $150 left, then we must have sold $850, right? so we can back into that number. If our inventory perpetual records and our inventory count match, we have no shrinkage, no loss due to theft. Case C, we begin the period with $150 worth of merchandise inventory. We buy another 500, so we have $650 worth of goods available to be sold. If we sell 200 of those, then we have 450 that we should have on hand. 
according to our perpetual records. They don't tell us how much is in the inventory account, but they say that we lost $10 worth of merchandise. That means that our account would be less than what we should have, so our account must be 440. Because if we, if our records say that we should have 450 and we only have 440, that would mean a $10 shrinkage. Case D. We start with $260 of merchandise on hand. They don't tell us what we bought or what we have available for sale, but they tell us two things. We have 210 left and we have 650 that we sold. If we add those two numbers together, 650 plus 210, we get $860 worth of merchandise that we could have sold. We call that goods available for sale. Now we can calculate by going backwards what our purchases would be. 260 in beginning inventory plus something equals 860. If we subtract, our purchases must be 600. Now let's see if we have any shrinkage. Our inventory perpetual records say we should have 210 on hand. When we count it, we only have 200, so we have a $10 loss due to inventory shrinkage. And that ends our demonstration. However, I wanted to mention one other thing. When we did, when we look at our presentation in Connect, both online and in our textbook, notice that there's no column here for goods available for sale. I suggest you add that calculation in. Not only does it make more sense, but it's easier to do your calculations. Have a great day.